In this video, we'll practice writing for loops in MATLAB. Please refer to the first video if you need a refresher on the for loop syntax. This is a script file aptly named forloopexamples.m. You can download a skeleton script file and a completed script file from the links in the video description. Before we do any coding, note that we have a series of housekeeping statements here and a brief description of the purpose of the script. Please do this on every code you write. You never know when you'll need to reopen this file. If you open this file in two years and you have no comments, you probably won't remember anything. But this simple one sentence line instantly reminds us that the purpose of this script is for testing out various for loops. Okay, on to the fun stuff. In the last video, there is an example about a four element vector called A and another four element vector called B, which is just the elements of A cut in half. Let's write this using a for loop. First, we need to define the A vector. And now we can write the for loop. We have the blue for keyword followed by our index variable i. i goes from 1 to 4 in increments of 1. Inside the loop, we have b of i equals a of i over 2. This means the ith element of the b vector is the ith element of the a vector divided by 2. i starts at 1 because we start filling the first element of the b vector and ends at 4 because there are 4 elements in the a vector. We're using i to control both how many times the loop iterates and which element of the b vector we are populating. This is by design. You'll probably do something similar in the for loops you write for this class. Finally, don't forget the blue end keyword. Before we run the code, let's click on this horizontal line. This red circle represents a breakpoint. The computer will stop running the code upon reaching a breakpoint. This is an incredibly useful debugging tool and we can use it to see how the for loop iterates. So the computer read the first line, entered the for loop, and stopped at this end keyword after the first iteration since we placed a breakpoint here. Let's inspect the variables in the workspace. We have the a vector, a single b value, and an i value i equals 1 because the code stopped running after the first iteration of the for loop. Therefore, b of 1 equals a of 1 over 2, which is just 10 over 2, which is 5. We can press the continue button to move to the next iteration. Now we see that the b vector has two elements and i change from 1 to 2. This means that the second element of the b vector is the second element of the a vector, which is 40, divided by 2, which is 20. Hopefully you can see how the loop works now. We can press the continue button a third time to see that we added the third element of b and i equals 3. In the last iteration, b has four elements and i equals 4. Our b vector correctly contains the corresponding elements of a cut in half. And if we press the continue button one last time, the computer exits the debugging mode and we can run the code as normal. Press the red circle to remove the breakpoint. I highly recommend using breakpoints when creating loops. For instance, if we saw that the third element of b was something other than 50, we would know that something went wrong in the third iteration of the loop and that gives us a good place to start further debugging. Get in the habit of utilizing breakpoints to test your code, no matter how simple your code may seem. This loop can be cleaned up a little bit. First, it's always good to make your code as general as possible. We want to avoid hard coding as many numbers as we can. For example, we said that i goes from one to four because a has four elements. But what if a had 10 elements? We'd have to change this four to 10. If we forgot to do that, we'd get the wrong b vector and it could take a while to debug. Wouldn't it be better to change this four to something more general? Also, if we navigate to the right, MATLAB shows us a warning that b changes size in every iteration. This is true, we just saw that we added an element to b every time the loop iterated. This is poor practice and is not memory efficient. Instead, 
what you should do is initialize the variable before the loop begins with the proper size. This is called pre-allocation. Let's redo this example using more generalized code. I'll comment the first example out since we don't need it anymore. Let's start with the a vector from before. We know that the b and a vectors will be the same size, so we can pre-allocate the b vector by setting it equal to 0 times a. Upon running the code, we see that we have the a vector as normal. We also have the b vector, which is a 1 by 4 0 vector. So the b vector has the proper size, but obviously the zeros need to be replaced with the correct values. This time, we're going to use the for loop not to add elements to b, but to replace each zero with a proper number. Turns out it's the same loop as before, but I'm going to change this 4 to length of a to make it as general as possible. You could also change length of a to length of b since a and b are the same size. Now our index variable i goes from 1 to however many elements are in a. This is good because length of a automatically changes if a changes. There's no need for us to modify anything within the loop. Let's place a breakpoint at the end and see what happens. After the first iteration, i equals 1, and the first element of b was changed from 0 to 5. If we step through to the second iteration, i equals 2, and the second element of b was changed from 0 to 20, as expected. I think you get the idea, so I'll quit the debugger, remove the breakpoint, and run the code normally. After the code ran, we see that our b vector is correctly filled in. MATLAB no longer gives us that warning about b changing size. In the first example, we added one element to b in every iteration. But here, b already had the proper size before the loop since we pre-allocated. We just replaced all these zeros, which are essentially dummy numbers, with the correct numbers. Pre-allocate whenever you can to save some memory and make MATLAB a little more efficient. Here's a brief modification illustrating the benefits of generality. Let's add an element to A. All we have to do is rerun the code as is and we get the correct B vector. We didn't have to change a single thing within this loop. If we hard coded the length of A as 4 instead, we'd have to change this to 5 to accommodate the extra entry in A. But since length of a automatically changes if a changes, we don't need to worry about changing anything to account for the change in a. In these examples, the loop counter variable i was incremented by 1 after every iteration. Let's do an example where we decrement the loop counter instead. This is pretty simple. The index variable is a variable, so we can call it whatever we want. In this case, we called it j instead of i. j starts at 5, goes down by negative 1, and ends at 2. Inside the loop, all we're doing is just displaying the value of j to illustrate how j changes after every iteration. As expected, j begins at 5 and is decremented by 1 all the way until we hit 2. Although simple, this example illustrates the versatility of for loops and our index variable. You can set the index variable to be anything you want in any range you want. For the last example, let's increment our index variable by something other than 1. Here, I made a vector called x, which goes from 0 to 5 in steps of 1. 
We can double click on it in the workspace to open a new tab, which shows us the elements of x in greater detail. Let's replace every odd index of x with twice its current value. So we're going to be replacing the first element of x with twice of 0. We're going to be replacing the third element of x with 2 times 2. And we're going to be replacing the fifth element of x with 2 times 4. Before we run this, let's see what the index variable z will be. z starts at 1, goes up by 2, and ends at length of x, which is 6 in this case. If we copy and paste it into the command window, we see that z equals 135, as expected. z doesn't go to 7 because length of x equals 6, so it has to stop at 5. Let's place a breakpoint at the end keyword and step through the for loop. In the first iteration, z equals 1. Therefore, x of 1 equals 2 times its current x of 1 value. While the current value is 0, so this first index will remain 0. In the second iteration, z is incremented by 2, so it goes from 1 to 3. This means that x of 3 equals 2 times the current value of x of 3 x of 3 used to be 2, but we doubled it so it's now 4. And finally, z equals 5 in the last iteration, so x of 5 was doubled from 4 to 8. The second, fourth, and sixth elements are unchanged since z is never 2, 4, or 6. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll do a couple quick examples using while loops.